Hi, it's Lenny McGill with the Glock Store Performance and Custom Shop right here in San Diego, California. Uh, this video is going to be about frames and uh, all about frames. But first, I want to talk to you about the, uh, the new Glock Store t-shirt that I'm wearing, as you can see. Huh? What do you think? Huh? Got the Pyramid logo on the one side, American flag on the other, and of course Glock Store right here, the GS logo, San Diego. So when you're in San Diego, come down and see us. You can pick up a shirt. Of course, they're available on our website along with our cool GS coffee mugs. Gotta love that, huh? Now, the, um, the frames. And talking about frames, this is kind of a misunderstood part in many ways. Um, you know, we've been selling a lot of the polymer 80 80% uh, lowers, which basically uh, mimic a Glock 17 frame. However, many people don't know that you can also build a Glock 22, a Glock 31, a Glock 34, or a Glock 35 on the polymer 80 frames. With that in mind, I decided that, you know, hey, you know, a lot of, we get a lot of questions about that. I thought, well, you know, people really don't understand how these frames work. So uh, a, a brief overview is here's a Glock 17. Here's a Glock 22. They are identical in many ways. Uh, the big difference, of course, is the caliber, obviously, right? Uh, this being a 9mm, 17 being a 9mm, 22 being a 40 caliber. The major difference is that uh, the frame is the same on both these guns, but the major difference is the upper. So these uppers are basically interchangeable. That's kind of what I want to get to. Hence, if you want to build a polymer 80 uh, 17 you can also build us a, a 22 or a 40 caliber uh, what's even more amazing is that you can use the same frame to build a, either a 34 or a 35 or a glock 31 a 357 so really the one frame the, the the size of the one frame is exactly the same and that holds true for the 20 and the 21 Basically same frames, the uppers are different, which is the same that holds true for the 26 and the 27. Same frames, basically the uppers different. Now there's a couple little things I want to share with you about that uh, that you know will will clarify some of the, what I've just said. So first of all, let's go ahead and uh, tear apart one of these Glock 17 frames. Of course, we're going to drop the magazine. No rounds in there. I know the gun's unloaded, but I'm going to check it anyways. Check inside the chamber. Keep my finger outside of the trigger, off the trigger. Make sure that it's safe and clear. Pull the trigger in a safe direction. Now, of course, we have an unloaded gun we can work on. To unload or to uh, disassemble the Glock, we're going to grab hold of the slide and pull it back just a little bit. Coming up and reaching up here on the slide, the lock lever, also known as a takedown lever. Pull down on both sides. And when you're pulling down, you want to keep it down, right? Okay, so, and then push forward and making sure to Hold on to the slide so it doesn't slide off and fall to the ground. And there comes the upper. And there's the 17. So I'm going to put the 17 upper aside. And many of you know that we sell complete 17 uppers. So they go right on top of any one of these frames. All right. We also sell complete 34 uppers and 35 uppers. Now, same thing with this 22. I'm going to go ahead and drop the magazine. Check inside. Make sure it's unloaded. Pull back. And off comes the upper. So now, let's look at... Uh, both these frames. Now, a couple things about the frames here in America. Uh, the frame is considered the full gun. All right. This is a gun. This, the upper, is a part. We can sell this to anybody in America without any license or any permits or any fees or anything like that. It's just a, it's just a part. All these are parts. There is a serial number attached to this barrel and a serial number attached to the slide. But, and it corresponds with the serial number that's on the gun when it comes from the factory. But it doesn't have to remain the same, all right? This is the gun. This serial number, like I said, it is the same as the serial number you'll find on the bottom of the gun. And if we look in here, you're going to see a serial number right here. And there's a, uh, a plate that has been uh, embedded in the plastic. Now, it's important that you do not alter, change, mar, or even hide or cover that serial number. It needs to be available to be seen at any time, really, from uh, you know, anybody's perspective, because that's how the gun is identified. 
Oftentimes the uh, ATF will come to our shop and say, hey, we're looking for a certain gun. They give us a serial number. We type it into our computer. Boom, there's the information. Where did that gun go? They want to track that gun. They track it by the serial number. Like I said, in the United States, the frame is the gun. The upper is just a part. So we do sell uppers for all these guns separately, and we sell the frame separately. When we sell a frame, we have to sell the frame to you, and then we ship it to an FFL dealer in your area who will do the paperwork necessary for you to pick up the gun in your state. So basically, if there's a background check or if there's not a background check, depends on what state you're in, uh, we ship it to the FFL, they do the paperwork, you go to that store to pick it up. We cannot ship you a frame directly. Now, what's interesting in California, the state of California, the frame itself, even though we can sell the full gun, we can't sell the frame itself. Pretty crazy, right? Because this frame, as it stands right here, is not on the approved list or the roster of approved guns. <laughs> Pretty crazy, right? Uh, it's the same exact thing, but again, California has their quirky laws, and one of them is that, hey, this frame is not this this frame is not really on that list the full gun is on the list but the frame itself is not on the list so we can't sell the frame to individuals in california we can sell them to law enforcement because they're not uh, held to the same laws because they're law enforcement crazy crazy stuff huh now what's interesting today um uh, is that uh looking at the serial number i can actually read that serial number because i just got lasik surgery on my left eye now, LASIK, uh, of course, has been around for a while, but it, it has improved my eye to be able to read close. So you'll notice that I'm not wearing glasses. And uh, if you see that my eyes are a little bit fuzzy or a little bit uh, red, I just got the surgery two days ago, so it's in the healing process. But I'm pretty fascinated that I can actually read that serial number without my glasses. Kind of cool, huh? So now, let's get back to these frames. So we talked about the frames. Now, the other interesting thing that's really fascinating to me is that in some countries around the world, I've been told that the frame is really considered a part, and the upper is considered the gun. Isn't that weird? So different countries have different laws, but of course we're in the United States, and so we know that the frame is the gun. This is the part that's serialized, and the part that's tracked, and the part that needs to be uh, sent to uh, through uh, um, an FFL dealer. Well, we all know that. Now, let's look at these two frames. This on my right hand uh, is the uh, 17 frame, and this on my left hand is the 22 frame. They're identical in so many ways, but the major difference you will see is that the ejector, which is the steel rod that actually ejects the round out of the chamber after it's been shot, is bent slightly on the 17 or the 9mm version, and it is straight on the 40 caliber. Now, that's interesting. You think about it. Why? Well, again, same frame. Everything's the same. Same diameters here. The slides, basically, same diameters on the outside. But the 9mm bullet is a little smaller in diameter. And so the ejector is bent over to be able to reach it. Whereas the 40 caliber bullet is larger and the ejector is straight to be able to reach it. So one of the things you want to consider here is to think about that if you were to take a 9 millimeter lower and put a 40 caliber or 22 upper on top, okay, which is very possible, right? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, and demonstrate that it actually fits, all right? It'll fit and function and fire. It'll accept the 40 caliber magazines because the mags are basically the same body and everything else. The lips are a little different. So the mag will go in, and I'll be able to shoot 40 caliber. However, two things to be concerned about. First and foremost is that ejector is bent, and there is a small chance that it could intersect with the primer of the 40 caliber round. So as you're pulling the slide back, there could be a possibility that that could cause an ignition of the round, which would be catastrophic, not good. So if you are going to put a 22 upper on top of a 17 frame, you need to make sure that you change out the ejector. 
Now you can change out the ejector by just grabbing hold of it and yanking it out of there with a pair of pliers. It's really that easy. And then you just push another one back into the slot that's in that trigger housing. The preferred method would be to change the entire trigger housing, which is a very simple process. I've got other videos uh, throughout this website that will show you how to do that in particular, but that would be a preferred method. So uh, that in, in, in being said, uh, that's one thing you have to think about uh, to be able to change these around from a nine millimeter to a 40 caliber. Now, when you go from the 40 caliber down to nine, you don't necessarily have to worry about that, although you may have some uh, weird ejection problems. It'll still function. It may not fly that round out of there in the same pattern or the same velocity or the same direction as with the bent ejector. So if you follow that. Now, the other thing to think about is that in the 40 caliber upper versus the nine millimeter upper, and this holds true against uh, all of them, the uh, 17, 19, uh, 26, uh, the 22, 23, 27, as well as the 31, 32, 33. The, um, the extractor, which is the claw that grabs hold of the round, is slightly different in the 40 caliber than it is in the 9. Not to say that it won't function, but it is slightly different. And if you get any kind of failures to eject or failures to uh, feed, in a sense, uh, that could be part of the problem. The other thing that's different too, the other part that's different from Glock, is the actual safety depressor plunger, which is a small little plastic bead that, uh, that goes uh, against the, uh, uh, the slide cover plate up here. So, now, I have changed these around. The only thing I've ever really worried about when I go from 40 caliber, when I, when I take a nine millimeter upper and put a 40 caliber upper uh, a nine millimeter lower and put a 40 caliber upper on it is to change the ejector. That's the only thing I really ever worry about. Uh, I've never had any problems with the ejection, but just something to think about and something to know that they are different parts and the 40 caliber extractor is different than the 40, the nine millimeter extractor ever so slightly. I mean, just a little different angle because again, the round is a little different shape. So that being said, uh, that's something to keep in mind. Now, one of the things that people uh, often ask about is, well, what about that 357? You know, that's kind of a cool round, and it really is a cool round. It's expensive, but 357 is, you know, a, a, a super high velocity uh, nine millimeter, basically. And what it is, it, what's really interesting about 357, it is really a 40 caliber round that is neck down to 357. So that being said, uh, the uh, the 31, which is the full size frame for the 357 really has the same characteristics as the 22 or the 40 caliber uh, uh, full size uh, frame. So if you um, look at the ejector on the 31, it's going to be the same as on the 22. And the uh, extractor is the same, and that safety plunger is also the same. Uh, so, all that said, you have the ability uh, to interchange these frames. Now, what's really fascinating to me is that you can take this same frame, nine millimeters, say, and here's my 34, one you've seen me shoot probably a whole bunch of times. I'll go ahead and do the same disassembly on it. This 34 will fit right on the same 17, just like so, with no changes whatsoever. Voila. So that's what's really neat. So when you're building a polymer 80 gun. It starts out really as just a, a frame. It can be a nine millimeter frame if you put the nine millimeter ejector in it, or a 40 caliber frame if you put the 40 caliber ejector in it. And you can put either a 17 upper on it, or the 22 upper, or a 34, or a 35, or a 31. So you really have five options with that. And that's kind of how this frame thing works uh, here too, is that I can change this up in a heartbeat and go back to the other side, which is, here's my original frame. Now you can see my frame's got the, the, the um, Falcon grips on it and uh, my magwell and all that stuff. Okay, so now all that information is basically the same for these other guns. Of course, the 2627, same concept. I can interchange 
the uppers, just making sure that the ejector is correct for the correct caliber. Now, what's also interesting in my mind is that the 20 and 21 operate the same. These magazines are basically the same exact bodies and they would go back and forth, same size on the outside. Now, most of you probably know that the 10 millimeter is really a tall 40 caliber. So you, you have to expect that there's gonna be a little bit of difference in the uh, ejector. Get this guy set up. And here's your 21. There we go. Okay, so there's my two uppers. Now these uppers, again, are interchangeable uh, with the frames, as long as I have and, and try to change or keep my ejector. Now it appears to me that these ejectors are the same, but I believe the extractors are what's different. So there's the ejector on both these. These are 21 SFs, okay? Both these are SFs because they don't make the standard uh, frames of the original frames anymore. Uh, and this information, by the way, for all these different guns also applies to the Gen 4. However, the Gen 3 frames are different than the Gen 4 frames and you cannot interchange the uppers because they don't fit perfectly, all right? So I can't put a Gen 3 upper onto a Gen 4 frame and likewise a Gen 4 upper onto a Gen 3 frame. Just doesn't work. Uh, one of the most notable things to see is that the nose ring in the Gen 4 is larger than in the Gen 3. So that's noticeable and that's like, okay, just when you put it on there, it, it will actually fit on the frame, but it just doesn't fit tight. Like we've never really actually shot it. Maybe we should try that sometime because maybe it would actually work, but we just don't think it looks good. <laughs> okay, so there is the interiors and it looks like these are interchangeable except possibly for that extractor, all right? Because the ejectors look exactly alike and uh, they are the exact same part number. So that being said, those guys are interchangeable just like that and the same is true with the uh, 29 and 30. And uh, these frames, um, uh, again, all the same characters that we just talked about as far as uh, the serial number and uh, the licensing and everything else. We have to sell this as a licensed part and this one is just a regular accessory and we can ship this uh, anywhere in the continental USA as well as uh, Canada, oh, excuse me, Alaska and uh, Hawaii. So, all right, so there's all that information about this and one of the things I, I wanna say is that we do offer every once in a while a, a pretty good special on our lowers and um, we sell them stripped so that you have the ability to add those parts back into it to uh, make it what you want it to be. Sometimes we sell the lowers complete. So you'll see on our website, we have a, a, uh, a complete lower or a complete upper, all complete. And then we have a stripped lower or a stripped upper. So the, uh, obviously the stripped is just bare by itself, nothing else in it. And then of course the complete would be all the components that you need for a particular caliber. If you see that we have a, uh, a nine millimeter complete G17 upper and you say, you know what, I really want a 22, let us know, we'll just change that extractor out for you, and ejector, excuse me, and, um, and send it to you. So it's that easy. So that's the, uh, the lowdown on these frames. Like I said, uh, they're really an amazing piece of technology. Uh, we typically will have these in stock, uh, but sometimes we run a special on them, and uh, that's why I wanted to do the video, because today we're gonna do a special. Now you'll see this video later on, it could be a different time, so don't hold me to that, but you know, that's why you know, I, I, we get a lot of questions about these frames, and I hope this video has been able to help you answer some of those questions. And of course, if you have any other questions, you know, we encourage you to call our shop. We've got you know, experts here, uh, and we've got gunsmiths on duty most of the time, like you know, really 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., there's someone here who can uh, answer a question for you, uh, have you if you have any questions about, you know, do these parts work, does this work there, does that work there, and we always, almost always have every factory part in stock for you to mix and match and, and make it work for you. So, I'm Lenny McGill with a new Bionic Eye here in San Diego and my new uh, Glock Store t-shirt. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you uh, next time. And when you're in San Diego, please come on down, say hello, make a visit, shoot some guns, have some fun, and uh, and uh, hope to see you in uh, San Diego soon. Thanks a lot.